what is going on back on jack stands new day new video i guess drive shaft that's not the one that's out of the car that's the new one that doesn't fit yeah so i'm gonna start this video saying i am no driveline expert by any means uh the one i have in here i can't even tell you the measurement we made if i remember correctly i did it an inch shorter than stock i had the slip yoke one inch shorter than what the factory u joint was my theory behind that i'll bring you along reason i made it shorter is because i kind of figured i needed a lot of slip uh smart person really would have just measured it instead of just going in gung-ho that was my fault it is what it is an expensive mistake uh come to find out i needed about three and three quarter inches three and a half three and three quarter inches worth of slip so they got a set screw in here and what that means is there is a bit of yoke inside of here. I figured that would be enough stick in, I guess you'd call it. Enough of the spline in there to support this. Just like on the dry shaft side. You know, you can only come out so far before it starts creating vibrations. I want to say it has to have about an inch inside of the uh, tail shaft of the transmission. So you figure that this being staked in there they would have put the allowed amount in there that needs to be in there to not have any vibrations well they don't as you can see where that paint mark is that's where the guy at the dry shaft shop had to collapse this in order to get it to balance out right so the way i'd measured it i left slip in the front and slip in the rear but with that spring it held everything in so nothing would come out of the front of the dry shaft not to mention my dry shaft wouldn't be butted up against my seal destroying my seal like it did in the blue rose but the problem I immediately ran into when I put it in the car, traveled fine, worked perfect just as I needed it to. I drove the car down the road, it had some vibrations, come to be expected, you know. I tweaked the upper trailing arms, trying to get the pinion just right, it seemed like it got better, then it kind of seemed like it didn't really make any difference at all, so I just kind of tried to find a happy medium. But when I crawled back under there, I had the suspension compressed, and I grabbed the drive shaft, and you can wiggle it, and I'll show you a little clip of when you can wiggle it. So this is a slip yoke with no pressure on it. Um, there's about a half inch hanging out of the yoke on the tail shaft of the transmission. And this is what happens when you don't compress it. And that will cause a hell of a vibration. Sound like some subwoofers beating down in your trunk. So it dawned on me. That's what the driveline guy was trying to tell me. When I brought my drive shaft to the shop, the guy had told me, he was like, you basically want to compress it while you put it in the car and have it just pop back into the rear end. I was like, no, that doesn't sound right at all. I was like, I need as much slip as I can. What I didn't really understand is he was telling me that, you know, more slip had to be in that yoke than what was already preset. Would have been a nice thing to know, you know, when you get this, come with some kind of instructions at all. Say, hey, you know, you need to make your dry shaft this X amount longer or this X amount shorter. You know, I still don't have a formula, to be honest. I'm just kind of going as it is. Uh, as you can see, I got two dry shafts. They're expensive. That's probably about a thousand bucks right there. So big mistake. You know, one of them is going to work. I think the other one will work in uh, Struggle Love. He had bought a slip yoke for it. Like I said, this one here is going to work. It's going to have the right amount of slip. Uh, mine just needs more because it goes up higher. As you can see, I got the end of this drive shaft taken apart. This is the one that will work. Uh, what I did, when I put it in the vehicle, like I said, that was sticking out all the way. This side over here had, uh, when it was all the way down, it had, I think, an inch of stick out, which is good. When I lifted it up, this bottomed out into the tail shaft of the transmission. Um, before when this car had stock suspension well had stock length suspension i could ride it lift it up and it never eat the tail shaft seal the blue rose had the same size cylinders lower springs you know less coil in the back but when you rode it all the way up it would just wipe the tail shaft seal every time that's how i got my videos for doing the tail shaft seal because you know it was a problem so i didn't think it'd be an issue on this one but once I started driving it and I actually lifted it all the way up, I started wiping tail shaft seals out of this. So I knew that was a problem. So I knew I had to get this, you know, to not bottom out in the end of the transmission. So I ended up having to put a spacer in here. Also, I needed that to compress more. That way it would uh, not have any run out. So what I did, you can maybe see down in there, I put me a spacer in there. What that spacer is, is a hydraulic cylinder. Uh, Apparently the shaft from a Hoppo's cylinder circa 2006 is the perfect diameter for the inside of a yoke. Uh, it fits in there. I 
it was a it was a machinist fit when it slid in there you just hear the air coming out of the uh splines so it is a very very tight fit i can't get it out of there which i kind of need to get it out of there maybe remove like a half inch um i'll have to get the measurements of what i put in there i think it was two and a half inches i probably should have put two inch it would probably vary for you uh, it's going to be kind of trial and error honestly but i'll tell you why i gotta put a shorter section in there so i put the spacer up there put the dry shaft in the car looked really good um, this was compressed a lot more it wasn't quite to that painted mark but it had the whole blue spline inside the slip drove the car drove perfect i was very happy it had a little well it had a little bit of vibrations i will say that about 35 it vibrated that still could be an opinion but before it was just droning so bad it sounded like i had you know a pair of 12s in the trunk just woo, woo, woo. extremely aggravating but the only thing i did notice when i locked it up i did have full slip but it compressed that spring all the way and now when i lock it up it makes kind of a weird noise um, obviously i can't really show you the noise because i got the dry shaft out but it didn't do that before and the only thing i can think is it was compressing the spring all the way when it was completely locked up. And I think it was just that spring rubbing on each other and resonating through the dry shaft. So what I did, so seeing as these dry shaft slip yokes are cheap and easy replaceable, at least you can get the spring. So if I did screw up, I can order another one from Black Magic. But I just cut, you know, a few coils off. I think I cut one whole coil off. So I'm gonna put that in there. Hopefully that'll make this not compress all the way. It won't have the vibrating noise and we'll see if that'll fix our issue so i got my cut down spring in here and as you notice the nice flat part that was gone that seated up around this little ring very nicely kept everything centered you know that's no longer there so i predict this kind of unwinding on the dry shaft but i'm running out of time on this thing so we're just gonna have to rock that and see what it does uh that's the reason i didn't cut it down here because there's like no shoulder whatsoever and it would definitely just unscrew down that these dry shafts are both have a 96 Cadillac, but they are different. Uh, you can see up there, uh, the narrow part where it gets wide, they're totally different. And back here, they're totally different. You know, I was wondering if it was different dry shafts, but I did pull them both from Fleetwoods. You know, this one was out of the Blue Rose. This one was out of the Tan Cadillac. So, so we're going to throw this in the car. If it works, it works. If not, I guess I'm going to rob the spring off of this one. And I may just have to deal with the noise here that or chain it down just a little bit. Either way, something's going to have to happen. So now the car fully locked up, you can still see the light in between the spring coils. Before they are butted together, and I think that was what was making my noise, hopefully. So as I said earlier, I don't really have a formula. This is the best advice I can kind of give you right here. You want that slip inside of this. Uh, it's about an inch and a half. You can get away with two inches. Kind of measure how much you got there. Roughly it's about three inches. Most setups, that's probably going to be what you use. Um, if you need more, I mean, you can't leave it out. You will have vibrations, you know, fair warning. But what I would do on the yoke side, which I don't have on here, uh, I would put probably like a one inch spacer inside the yoke that goes in the transmission. I would stick that into the transmission, get your measurement, see how far you need, uh, lay it out and lift it up. But more than likely, what I would probably do with this. You have your inch and a half right here that you're going to be compensating, that you're going to be losing, you're going to be closing that up. So I would extend that probably an inch and a half past what your factory dry shaft is. That way when you put it in there, with the car laid out, it'll still sit in the same place, but that will be pushed in there. That way it won't be wiggling around. You'll still have that much slip. And up front, when you put your spacer in, it's going to not make that yoke crush into that tail shaft seal and wipe the tail shaft seal out. So it turns out the problem I was having with the dry shaft, uh, apparently when I spaced it back, it brought the angle back and there's a little weight there for the dry shaft. It was nicking on the exhaust. Yeah, that sucks. A lot of work for nothing really. Um, I mean, I guess I had to move the dry shaft back, but yeah, a lot of work for nothing really. Um, yeah, as you can see, no wheels. They didn't get stolen. I'm not uh, catching hell trying to get them to not leak. It's been rough, man. I'm about ready to just send this thing down the road. It's been really super aggravating, but we'll see what we can keep doing. So hopefully that video will help you out. Uh, one of these scenarios, you know, I always say you don't know what you can do until you do it. Well, sometimes you still don't know, even if you have some idea that you think you know what you're doing, you really have no idea what you're doing, and it's very, very expensive, and you just kind of have to learn through it. So hopefully this will help you not have a very, very expensive drive shaft like I do, and it'll all work out for you. Uh, 
I haven't really seen any other videos kind of pertaining to this, so hopefully it'll help you guys out. Um, mine's doing good so far. Keep you guys in touch, obviously, and let you know if I run into any problems, you know, therefore I can kind of foreshadow that for you guys so you don't run into the same problems. Anyways, I got tons of work to do still. I might just say heck with it all, get rid of the car, who knows. Anyways, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one. Appreciate you guys watching. Aggravate me one too many times and see what happens. She gone. Good shot. Got away free. It lives to die another day. <laughs> <laughs>